Hmm. Think about that for a moment. Waited for something else. Curious if there was something else that might satisfy my need. And so I want to talk to you for a few minutes. Y'all went pretty quick. Y'all, y'all, y'all give me an hour. I, I, I promise I won't keep you that long. But I want to talk to you for a few minutes tonight about wait and see, but don't miss him. Wait and see, and don't miss him. Because if you stare too long and let your mind wander, you'll find yourself in a place where you'll miss the footsteps that God has ordered for you. And so I want to Read, I don't know if she's got on have it up here on the on the board for you. It's John chapter 20, starting in verse 1. Now there's a little bit of reading, and I'm not the greatest reader, so deal with it. As I, I can't see y'all. I don't need to see y'all. All I need, need to do is see this right here. Oh, here we go. Hallelujah. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early. Now, now, as I was sitting right there and I began to read that again, the first day of the week popped into my spirit because I don't know who this is for, but God give it to me right there. It might be in the middle of your storm, in the middle of your situation, but any day of the week could be the first day for you. That's just a side one for you. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early. When it was yet dark in, unto the tomb, I'm going to say tomb. I think it's called the poker, but we're going to call it tomb. And seeth the stone taken away from the tomb. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. And saith unto him, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we know and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and the other disciple and came to the tomb. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the tomb. But there's something about the tomb. Ah, I didn't realize that tomb was in, the, in this chapter so many times. I, I, whenever she was singing about chains being broken and, and all that. Hey, we don't have to continue to walk in tomb-like life, amen. We don't have to continue walking in places that are dead in our lives. Amen. We don't have to continue seeking after things that's not going to bring life to you. We don't have to continue falling under the, under the dogmatic things of this world that's going to cause us our our hearts and our lives to be subject to things that are trying to tear you apart. I'm glad to know that no matter what the tomb looks like, amen, we serve a risen Savior that's able to take care of every tomb situation that you come in contact with. Uh, and he stooped down and looked in. Now this is John. And he stooped down and looked in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then came Simon Peter following him and went into the tomb and seeth the, the linen clothes lie. And the napkin, <laughs> oh Lord, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Now go ahead. Then went in also the other disciple which came first to the tomb and he saw and believed. Now, now I was kind of curious what was it that they believed? But go to the next verse. And, I'm a, and, and, and I'll tell you, for as yet they knew not the scriptures uh, that he must rise again from the dead. So what did they, what did they believe? What they believed was the report that they just heard. Mary came in and she was just going crazy because the last time she had seen Jesus is when they brought him off the cross. And there, that was the last time that she seen him. And so her next expectation of seeing Jesus was being wrapped up in clothes or 
and linen. But what she didn't understand, but back, if you read on back into the, you know, the, the one or two chapters before, Jesus begins to tell the disciples and those that were close. Now, there were some women there with them, amen, because the women took care of them. You know what? We couldn't do anything without our wives, men. I mean, I don't care what you do, amen. If it wasn't for women, we'd be all jacked up and cross-threaded. Uh, but the Mary was there. They were there. And there Jesus told he just tells them a couple, couple chapters back of what was going to take place. He said, for a little while I'll be here, and then a little while I'll be gone. Uh, but don't worry, you'll see me again. And even though they didn't understand, uh, there had to be something inside of, Mar of, of Mary that caused her to do what she's fixing to do next. Now Mary, hold your place, Mary had the wrong expectation. Now Mary possibly fell in love with Christ about two and a half, well, about half a year into his ministry. This is the same Mary that was that that was demon possessed by seven demons. And she had an encounter with Jesus. And Jesus changed her life so dramatically and I, as I was thinking about the seven demons I thought about well is this possibly the seven deadly sins I do what you want with it but what I do know is this is that if you have seven demons now there might be some of you that have my one or two up in here but seven demons and yet she didn't kill herself and yet Listen, there was an appointment for her to meet the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So it doesn't matter what situation we find ourselves in, you have an appointment with God. Who knew what her day, the Bible doesn't go into details what, what, what her daily life was, Robert. All it says is that she was demon possessed, seven demons. That's almost as bad as having five wives. Sorry, ladies, back, back up. But there was an appointment, and she didn't understand. But isn't it, isn't it great that sometimes when you don't understand, there is still something inside of you that kind of directs you in an in a area of life that maybe you don't understand why I'm here. You don't understand how I got here. But what we do know is that when God orders the footsteps of his children, amen, God's not going to lead you into strange pastures, amen. God's not going to send you to places that you're not going to be able to grow in the grace and the knowledge of God. But God will send you somewhere that will cause you to be strong in the Lord, amen. And you'll be able to do great things. Whenever Jesus said, when I go away, greater things shall you do. You won't do it if you're walking in the wrong area. You won't do it if you're leading if you're following after men. Oh, hang on a second. Wow. Go to the next verse. Then the disciples went away unto their own house. These were men that walked with Christ. Peter walked on water. John it was awfully a bragging. Because if you find out here, he said the one that Jesus loved. And then he bragged about beating Peter to the tomb. I love that guy. But it said here, go back to 10, please. Then the disciples went away unto their own house. After knowing, after Jesus telling them, after being with Christ and at the Last Supper when Jesus begins to tell them all that's going to take place, still yet, when it came down to it, they forgot what Jesus had said. But they come here and I, could, I was trying to get my sanctified imagination and I was just watching through my, through my mind's eye and I could see Peter walking in 
Because Peter had an attitude. He'd rather uh, cuss you and then catch you and then have Jesus to heal you. Amen. But Peter, I could see him as he just walked in to the tomb as if he owned the place. And then John stood outside like a little, like little sheep or something. I don't know. But Peter goes in and then Peter evaluates the area he sees the linen just falling right there but he sees the napkin folded up neatly he didn't stop to question why it is that this was falling the way it was and this and here was folded the way it was he just turned away after John came in when John came in he said I believe what do you believe I believe what Mary said and that's it so they turn and they go back to where they came from they missed a great phenomenon a great miracle they missed. But Mary. Oh, you go to number 11. They walked in. Now watch this. <laughs> when John came up to the tomb, Pastor, he walked up. He seen the big stone rolled away. And this wasn't just any old stone. See, they should have thought something right there. Because whenever they took the stone, they took brass and they melted the, mel uh, uh, melted the brass and they, they enlined the stone to bring security. Not only that, but they had some folk out there watching out. Ah! But whenever John came in, he seen the big stone mo moved out of the way. And he, he didn't question anything. When he got there, he looked, he stooped. And he looked. He got into a posture of finding out what's going on. But what he didn't understand was that what he seen was significant. But he didn't look. He didn't look long enough. He was waiting for somebody else to come along and try to help him to understand. But the one that came along, he didn't give him any insight, no instruction. Be careful who you follow because you may end up in the wrong place with the wrong information. What they didn't understand was Mary. She came. Is this on Facebook? I can't be doing that. She came up and she did the exact same thing as John did. She got into a posture. When you stoop, that means you're looking for something. I don't walk around like this all day. You feel me? So if I'm going to stoop, it's because I'm in a posture of finding out something that I can't see from this level. Sometimes we got to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God and get into a posture and that we can begin to see what God is really saying. Amen. Just sometimes God ain't going to speak to you up here. You got to get down on your knees sometimes and God will start to show you things. What they didn't, what they didn't see was well, Jesus was tying the Old Testament to the New Testament. You see, in the Old Testament, after Moses got the, ah, got the commandments, and then God, then they got out in the wilderness, and God told them to build an ark of the covenant, and they'd take that ark, and they'd stick the Ten Commandments in it, and then they stuck a bowl of manna, and then they stuck Aaron's rod in it, and that was, the, that was where God would, God would meet with the people. And then on top of the, of the Ark of the Covenant, there was two angels. One at the foot and one at the head. And they had wings and they were spread out as if he's going to cover you. Glory to God, let me tell you something. When we get into the presence of God and we allow ourselves to get into a posture of praise, he will open up his arms and shelter you, glory to God. And so what John didn't see, Mary saw. She didn't understand. Huh? But doesn't Revelation say, blessed are those that read this prophecy. Doesn't say anything about understanding. God will bring understanding when it's time to understand. You better get away. But when she walked up and she got down to a posture because she did she didn't understand. She came to see Jesus that was no longer there. Now, I didn't do a whole lot of search. Maybe somebody, when you come back, tell me later. 
I don't know if Mary was included in all the conversation with the other disciples. So maybe she didn't understand it fully of what was going on. But what she did understand was that there was something that kept her from going back to where she was. When you have come so far and God has pulled you so far out, you can't just hop up and run because somebody else says run. Amen. And she has experienced something that nobody else probably had experienced in that land, in that small town. And when she experienced it, she said, To whom shall I go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. So she stooped. And when she, what she's saying, now I remember John just saying some, Landon fought, fell on this side. You know, let me talk to you about that. <laughs> it's amazing. Why didn't, oh, thank you, Lord. Why didn't Jesus fold up the linen that wrapped his body? I thought about that. And then she said, then, where'd she go? Anyway, she sung that song about chains breaking. Look, when you've been tied up, huh? When you've been tied up and, and, and all the hell expecting you to die and stay dead, every skeptical out there that had pork in the crucifixion, your crucifixion, the last thing you want to be is coming out in what they put you in. Hey, let me tell you something. I don't care what your situation is like. Don't you walk around in the grave clothes that other people have put you in. Don't you walk around in situations that maybe you have put yourself in when God brings you out. Take that stuff off. Hey! He wasn't worried about folding up the trash that was trying to kill him. He shook it off. But then I thought, and there may be some more theologian. I ain't no theologian. Lord Jesus, I better spell my name. But I'm sure there's some smart folk that could tell me why he folded up the, the head garment. But can I give you mine? Now, I don't know if anybody's been schizophrenic, jacked up in their mind, twisted, uh, com not compressed, what am I saying? Depressed. I guess you could be compressed too. Depressed, suicidal, everything that the enemy wants to do to your mind. Because why, what did the Bible talk about when he talked about putting on the full armor of God? He said, put on the helmet of salvation. Why is the helmet of salvation so important? Because that's the devil's playground. And if he can get into your mind, it ain't going to matter what's in your heart. Because if he can twist you up and make you think something's wrong with you, you'll begin to dine in on that. And not only that, but Satan will make sure that he'll send somebody your way that'll walk the same road that you're walking and encourage your de diminished nature. So, my little clay boy explanation will be this. Jesus folded up that thing that covered his mind to let the enemy know and to let everyone know even in 2020 that when he died on the cross he did it with clear conscience. When he died on the cross there was a plan that God had set forth and Jesus followed it to the T. There was no buts, hands, or maybes, or ifs. Jesus knew from the beginning of what his purpose would be and he's letting you know that no weapon formed against him, the same weapon that's, that, that won't be formed against you will prosper. And so he took that thing off, put it down neatly to show the devil, you didn't win. You didn't win. Oh, you, you may have caused whelps and and. And my skin may have been laid open. You may have shoved the thorn down upon my head. But what you couldn't do, you couldn't steal the process that God the Father had set forth because my people needed. 
How many of you would serve a God that couldn't think? How many of you would depend on Jesus that couldn't make a conscious decision? Huh? How many yo a yo? Hey. How many yo a yo folk do y'all know? And, and if they gave you advice, you'd probably be like, Would you serve a Jesus that was like that? No. You kidding me? I'm already cross threaded. I don't need him to be cross threaded. But he did not. Y'all may find something else and get it good for you. Let me know what your thing is. But when he wrapped it up, Sandy, and he put it down, that's to say, it didn't get me. And because it didn't get me, it ain't going to get you. Huh? Mm. But Mary stooped without, which is outside, at the tune, weeping as she wept. Oh, she stood. Excuse me, I thought you can't read. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she wept because she missed him. She didn't know where he went. Almost the same way as Angela. Angela weeps when I'm not at home. <laughs> she stooped down and looked inside the tomb. Verse 12. And see the two angels <laughs> in white sitting. You see, all hell is chaotic. All demonic forces, they cause chaos. But here they are sitting. Reminds me of the old lunatic when after, <laughs> after he encountered Jesus. Everybody else seen him cutting himself. But when he had an encounter with the king, amen, when they came back and found him, he was sitting clothed in his right mind. Why was he in his right mind? Because Jesus had a process to go to the cross. And when he came out, he would fold that napkin up to let you know, a wild man, you don't have to be wild anymore. Glory to God, what God can give you. Ah. And see the two angels uh, in white sitting the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had laid. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto, said unto them, Because, now here's her explanation of why she's there and in that state of mind, Because they have taken away my Lord and I know not where they have laid him. Do you know that today, is this the 29th? Thank you. In 2020, society is trying to hide Jesus. They are given every, every excuse why God don't work, prayer don't work, going to church don't work. How you know? Because they're trying to shut us down. They're trying to take away what God has given us. The liberty. The freedom. How can we say whom the sun sets free is free if we don't walk out freedom? How can we continue living the life under the shadow of the oppressor whenever we serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords that lives Get that on your way home. That'd be good. You eat that for breakfast in the morning. When you get up in the morning and you feel oppressed, you feel like you got to do this according to this standard or that standard, won't you just stop for a second and say, for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. So whatever it is, I'm going to do what I have to do. Come hell or high water, I come whatever may, I'm going to do what i got to do. Because let me tell you something, if we bow to every single person, we will miss, listen, we will miss John and Peter, I didn't tell, John was, he already said, Jesus loved me more than everybody. So he's already close to Christ. And Peter was the one, when Jesus asked the question, who do men say that I am? 
And they give their answer. And Peter stood up and said, huh? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Simon Peter, flesh and blood had not revealed this unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven, has revealed this to you. He said, Peter, I'm going to build the church upon you. And listen, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. This is the same Peter that looked, went in, looked, yep, 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 and went back to his house. And if you'll read on into the chapter, you'll find out that after Jesus comes, <laughs> Jesus tells Mary, he said, now look, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I can't help it. Jesus tells Mary, he said, I want you to go tell my brethren that I am ascending. He had not yet ascended because he said, hey, Mary, don't touch me yet. I'm not there yet. But go tell my brethren that I am ascending. And so she goes and tells and what do they do? Nothing. But thank God. God's, God's plan and purpose goes beyond your ignorance. I'm lifting both hands. My toes are going too. Because the same evening, the Bible says, Pastor, that while the door is shut, that Jesus shows up and when he comes in, he says, Looky here, boys, it's me. But what did he say to them? One of the first things he said to them, Peace be unto you. Now, why did he say, Peace be unto you? Because I believe it is in chapter 14, Jesus is talking about the end time. But then he goes on, I think, around verse 15. He kind of changes gears. And he, said, and he starts talking to them about the death, burial, and resurrection. You can look at it and read it for yourself. But he knew that they would be fearful. So in, in, in verse 14, or chapter 14, I think, in verse 1, he starts out telling them not to fear because of the end times. But then he transitions, I think, over in verse 15. And he starts to tell them not to fear. And I think he told them this twice. Why? Because he knew that their hearts would be fearful whenever he died on the cross and they had no direction to go because he knew they would be in a state of mind where they wouldn't be able to function without Christ. And so he tells them, don't fear. And so when he shows up, ha, first thing he says to him when he comes in and the door shut, he said, boy, don't fear. So when he says don't fear, what are we doing? As a matter of fact, the Bible says, fear not him that is able to hurt your body. Fear not them that can kill the body, but yet fear him that can kill that can send both body and soul to hell. So you see, there's a high price when we fall into fear. Ah, oh, this is getting heavy. Because fear will cause you to abort your Christianity. What, did you just say that? Yeah, yeah I did. Fear will cause you to abort. Because when you're fearful, you won't walk in the way... If he is the lamp into my feet and the light into my path, that means I gotta walk it without fear because light goes before me. But if I listen, he said we can't walk in dark. So if we operate in fear, then we can't fulfill <laughs> what's in front of us. And if we don't ever fulfill what's in front of us, we will miss. Oh man. And when Jesus and when Jesus, mm, and when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Now, I like this. Man, I, I don't know if I got the energy. Lord, help me. I, I love this part. <laughs> because just as he was tying the Old Testament, the New Testament, Talking about the Ark of the Covenant, the angel sitting there on the head and on the foot. He goes a little step further. He didn't have to come back as a gardener. What? And not only that, but in the tomb area where this borrowed tomb is, is a garden. Did y'all know that? I didn't know that until earlier. Reading hell. Anyway. 
she turns around and sees a third man. It was Jesus, but she assumed it was the gardener. And so Jesus said unto her, Woman, why, why weepest thou? Whom, whom seekest thou? She supposed him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, I don't know how big she was, but she's fixing to flex. Watch this. Sir, if thou have done, if thou have what? borne him hence, tell me where thou have laid him, and I will take him. Is that right? Take him away. She had no idea of how she's going to do it. She just knew that you got my master. You got somebody that I've been following for two and a half years. Surely you got him because you're standing right here and you're, you look like a gardener. You probably got a shovel. Had no idea what was fixing to take place. But let me just stop right here a second. Because <laughs> whenever, <laughs> whenever Jesus shows up right there, Jesus is cool, man. He, he's just cool like this. He just shows up, Sandra, dressed up as a gardener. Now, why gardening outfit? Why couldn't it be in white robe? Boom, boom, boom. Why couldn't it be in, you know, the king of kings? Boom. Why? Because death began in the garden. Watch this. Death began in the garden. Whenever God came down, the Bible says that, that God and Adam would walk through, ah, walk through the garden in the cool of the day, just popping and locking, I mean, just talking and yakking and da 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 da. And then his wife, beautiful wife, had an idea. I'm just kidding, ladies. You know the story. Eve got tricked by the serpent. And so, you know, hey, you know what? I don't even think Adam knew he came from that tree. Bible doesn't say that uh, Eve said, here, this came off of this tree that God said, don't touch. Bible said that, he, that, that she gave to Adam. That boy jacked it. And he took of what he shouldn't have took. And death became instant right then. Death, the sentence started right then because they knew in an instant that they were naked, they were sinful, they had done wrong. So death began in the garden and Jesus showed up as a gardener in a tomb that was placed in the garden to signify that death Spiritual death has now been crushed under his feet, amen. We no longer have to walk in the sentence of death because of what Jesus did on the cross. And when he came off that tree and when he came out of that tomb, he said, forget it all. Settled. I don't know how much this thing is, but I want to crush it. I'm sorry. Jesus has said unto her, woman, wife, we was thou, who you seek? She supposed it was the gardener and said, ooh, I'm out of breath. And said, sir, if, if you have taken him, tell me where he's at and I'll go get him. I'm paraphrasing, yeah, y'all read it later. Jesus said unto her, now check this out. Any of y'all been in trouble with the Lord? About five of y'all are honest. God bless you. The rest of y'all, there's all kind of room up here. <clears throat> Jesus said unto her, Mary. Now first he calls her woman. To establish, now this is just me, to establish the separation because, the, because where he was, he was, he was representing death being crushed. But after he established that it's all been settled and it's finished, he had to step over a little bit and call his child who she was because he didn't want her to be tangled up where he was. He was busy killing the devil. 
Now, you may get something different. Eh. But whenever she heard herself, whenever she turned herself, well, I need my glasses soon, and saith unto him, what's that word, right? You know what? I practiced that for about all day, not all day, but quite a while. I was calling it rabioni. I was, I was all over the place. And I wasn't going to skip that and just say master. But you know what? There's something special. <laughs> There's something special about that word, even though I can't say it. It ain't just any old word. It signifies the master. Wishes to say master. Go on to the next one. Jesus said unto her, touch me not. Okay, we've already been there. Touch me not, for I, I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto the Father and your Father. Now, I tried to look up, Pastor, and I could be wrong. If I am, forgive me, and you can hook me up. But I don't know if Jesus ever said that the Father was your Father until possibly now. Until after they... Because Jesus, Jesus finally ascended to the Father, and he said, you know what? I'm wrong. Take that back. I'm completely wrong. I ascended to the Father and to your Father and to my God and your God. Aren't you glad you ain't just following anybody that's going any old way? Huh? But Jesus is going back to where it all began. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Glory to God. You know, sometimes we got to go back to where it all began. Sometimes we got to go back and, and, and just empty our hearts and our minds and give everything back to God. He said, cast your care upon me, for I care for you. Amen. He don't care how heavy it is on you. He don't care how stressful it is on you. All he cares about is that you give it to him. If you don't ever give it to him, you'll continue to walk in the muck and the mire for the rest of your life, and then you'll find out that when it comes time to see the Lord... You'll be like the five foolish virgins that wasn't ready. Peter and John missed probably one of the greatest opportunities to see Jesus face to face. And the one person that got to see it was not only a woman that back in that day had no, y'all do now, but they didn't have any opportunities. But she stood outside for a reason. Even though she was doubtful to where, to where Jesus was, didn't know where he was, blaming Jesus for taking Jesus, but she stood there because sometimes when you don't know what to do, <laughs> that you just stand and be unmovable, unshakable. Don't let every wind of doctrine take you to places that's going to get you all messed up in your mind. But surrender yourself to God and God will exalt you and lift you up. Glory to God. And when the day comes that Christ comes back, you won't be found missed. They missed the whole opportunity and they went back to their own houses. Jesus had to come to them twice after that. And they still didn't leave the house. Read it. He came to them, walked in the door. Remember I just told you to check me out? After that, Thomas wasn't there. Here's another one that missed it. That missed not the initial, but the second. Oh, the second count. Oh. Be careful of the second coming, folks. He missed, Thomas missed that next go around. And even though Jesus blessed him, still after that, they was like, well, what are we going to do? And Jesus, I believe what, the first time I believe it was, Jesus told him, He said, The Father has sent me. Now I send you. 
and he breathed on them the Holy Ghost. But yet they stayed. And then even after he come back for one person, Thomas, oh my goodness. Look, maybe you have missed it somewhere along the line. Aren't you glad that his grace is new every day? Because as he gave Thomas another opportunity, tonight he can give you another opportunity. But still, they didn't go nowhere. Matter of fact, they said, well, what are you going to do? Peter said, well, I'm going to go fishing. Went back to where Christ found them. He called them to be fishers of men. But they went back to what they were accustomed to. What they were secure with. Be careful with your security blankets. When you pee on them, they get stinky. When you slobber on them, they get stinky. You got to throw them away. And maybe if you wash them long enough, they'll fall apart and you get rid of it. Okay. But when Jesus found them on the boat, he didn't come out there with a stick ready to beat them, Pastor. No. Nah. But he made a profound statement. When he seen him out there, Eileen, he said, he called from the bank. And he said, children, have you any meat? Mm. You see, they weren't supposed to be in that boat. Jesus delivered them from the boat. They were supposed to be out there sharing the gospel that Jesus, the plan that Jesus left. I mean, he laid it out there. Not only that, but Jesus also told them, it's expedient for me to go because if I don't go, the comforter won't come. But they were so busy being in fear of the Jews. Being in fear. Fear, I'm telling you, fear will cause you to make stupid decisions. I know. I got a t-shirt. But Jesus called out to them, have you any meat? And I believe it was John that says, that's the Lord. And Peter girded up himself, jumped in the water, come up, now check this out. First you just tell them to put your net on the right side. Good Lord. Okay, I'm about done. Put your net on the right side. And they poured in a multitude. Now, watch this here. See, because Jesus ain't going to do everything for us. Check this out. I, I didn't even notice it just now. Whenever, whenever they came to the shore, the Bible says that they had, Jesus had coals and fish cooking I don't know where he went to get it but Jesus got it but he didn't give them his watch this now he told them he said bring yours in nobody caught that did you check this out when Jesus tells us to go do things to go be witnesses to go share the gospel it is our duty to bring in what he is commanding us to bring in. We can't always depend on somebody else's um, opportunities and success. R Ricky, you may bring in 1,500 people in the name of Jesus, but I can't ride on your success. I've got to go get my own. Huh? I've got, I've got, I can't, I can't make it to heaven on your, your, your shirt tail. Maybe some of y'all get it later. It, Mom, it, it's, it's important. And, and you know what? We're all guilty. We're all guilty. You know, we talk about filling the church up. But are we really talking about filling the church up? Or are we talking about selected people fill the church up? And then we will walk in the blessing of everybody else. Because you won't know who it is as long as I'm walking in the middle of you. And see, that's why Peter and John did not get to see Jesus initially face to face because they were so used to walking with him that they got dumbfounded. But it took a little woman that, that was jacked up, messed up, set free and delivered with no great knowledge but desperation. Everyone stand up to your feet. If y'all want to get a song ready, 
I guess in a nutshell is this here. Martha didn't miss the opportunity because she did not listen to other people. Peter and John said, okay, we believe he's gone, and they left. If she had have followed after them because of their status with Christ, right-hand men, if she had have followed after their status instead of her conviction, she would have missed the opportunity to be the very first woman to carry the gospel back to the knotheads that shouldn't have left to begin with. And because she stayed her course, even though she didn't know what the course was, she stayed her course. And look at her today. We're preaching about her over 2,000 years ago. So what are people going to say about you in the next 10 years if time lasts? In the next year, I, I'm looking for him to come anytime. I'm talking, the prophecies, Pastor, they have been fulfilled. All of them. They've all been fulfilled. So will we miss the great return of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords for what? For what? A little issue here and there. If you're allowing anything to come between you and God, you could miss heaven. Oh, <laughs> You don't want to miss heaven. You may miss your birthday. I may miss my anniversary. But Lord God, don't let me miss heaven. I may miss, I may fail every test coming and going. But don't let me fail this test. <laughs> what are you going to do? Are you going to allow this moment to pass by hoping that that preacher will shut up so that maybe I can numb everything that I just heard to where I'm not accountable. Do you know you're still accountable? It's 